jury convicts car dealership owners of wire fraud, conspiracy, and other financial crimes and sends the whole batch to federal prison. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. We've warned you about the activities of what the FTC refers to as unscrupulous dealers, but today's story is about one of the worst dealership groups to ever have been in the business of selling cars. Yeah. As their general manager admitted in his court testimony, in an effort to excuse his own fraudulent behavior, he said, it was a culture of people. It was the culture? That's a bit like a criminal saying, I grew up in a violent neighborhood. It was just a part of the culture. That doesn't excuse him from his crime. I read the testimony of the GM too. No apologies for all the financial pain he caused so many people, not even once. Out of all the thugs involved, he was the only one who didn't get sent to federal prison for 20 years. Why? How did he escape a prison sentence? He made a deal with the U.S. government to testify in court as a witness against his former buddies. Ooh. Buddies who paid him $700,000 in a single year, which he's been here on YouTube bragging about. Mm -hmm. Some of you already know who this is, and your guess is probably right. In the testimony process, he left everyone in the room seething with anger over his own actions, justifying it all by saying he was a victim of the money and it was a culture of people. That statement is so revealing. Dealership culture teaches, promotes, and encourages unethical behavior. The reason we were immediately suspicious of another creator group here on YouTube is that we know all about dealer culture and no honest person could ever survive 40 years of it without a lot of totally crooked stuff. We know with confidence that dealers teach their crooked culture and weed out people with ethics because We've sat in those training classes in which we heard phrases like, there's a fine line there, but you have to learn to walk it. They don't want to say that they're encouraging illegal or unethical behavior, but they are saying you're walking the line, just as the FTC told one of our viewers, dealers are always walking with one foot in illegal activity. There's another reason we know they teach it everywhere. Besides just the dealers we knew, dealers all over the country spend thousands of dollars to hire this general manager we're talking about or to send their sales staff to be trained by the same GM in his brand new sales training facility. Still. The very guy who testified under oath to doing some of the most heinous crimes ever committed against car buyers and even the banks that we've ever heard of. The crimes he committed are beyond the comprehension of any typical car buyer. One thing we know for sure, a lot more operators like this guy exist in the car business. They may not do everything this guy did, but their actions would horrify you nonetheless. In a moment, we're going to share some key learning tips derived from actual testimony in this case. Stuff for you to watch out for telling you you're dealing with a total crook and it's time for you to run. There are a few dealers involved here and all under the same ownership. Before we go further, here are some names. Big Red Dealer Group. The headline from November 22nd, 2021 reads, Jury convicts Big Red Dealership's owners of wire fraud conspiracy and other financial crime. The article goes on to say, On Friday, November 19th, a federal jury convicted Bobby Chris Mays, 49, Charles Gooch, 63, and Courtney Wells, 36, all residents of Norman, of multiple counts of wire fraud conspiracy, issued forged securities and aggravated identity theft, announced acting U.S attorney Robert J. Under the same Big Red umbrella was Big Red Sports Imports, Big Red Kia, Norman Yamaha, Norman Mitsubishi, and Mays Kia. We also have some appalling evidence from court transcripts to share. Because the case went to trial and is settled, the transcripts became public record and an anonymous source saw our reaction videos, got the court documents, and sent them to us. And furthermore, the published article states on September 16, 2020, a federal grand jury returned an indictment alleging that from January 2014 to March 2019, Mays, Gooch, and Wells used their positions as co-owners of the Big Red dealerships to encourage in a conspiracy to commit wire fraud in which they sought to obtain millions of dollars of loan proceeds. The indictment further alleged that the defendants made materially false statements and omissions to lenders about the type, source, and amount of borrowers' down payment or vehicle trade-ins and bribed at least one loan officer. Ooh. They went to great lengths to fake down payments for customers, calling it King Cash in their dealer track and Reynolds & Reynolds software. It wasn't cash at all. Entirely made up fake money they gave the customer a receipt for and then had morally compromised finance people in the dealership do the coaching for the customer on what to say if they were called and interviewed by the bank. Yes, the customer had to be in on the lie if the bank called them or the car would have to be returned. Okay, friends, a couple of red flags that should immediately tell you to avoid the dealer if they come up. Number one, if a dealer advertises or advises you that they can get all types of credit or no credit approved 
and makes claims like, when others say no, we say yes, <laughs> run away. Fast. <laughs> Isn't it a bit funny that the person pictured here is wearing a motorcycle helmet so they can't be identified? Yeah. The reason for the helmet is that the only way a given dealer can approve you, no matter how bad your credit is, would be to commit fraud on your behalf. Sure. There's a reason banks are regulated and have guidelines. If your credit is that bad, the law must be violated to get you done. There's no two ways about it. Number two, if the dealer says no money down, approval guaranteed, approvals today. There's a really good chance the dealer is playing games with fake money, like the king cash that Big Red used. And another thing which Kevin hasn't mentioned yet, if the dealer should happen to ask you if you have anything you can pawn, <laughs> also get out of there as fast as you can. A pawn shop, which is just another fake, could very likely be another source of fraudulent made-up money. Big Red used a fictitious pawn shop called Norman Pawn and Gun Shop. No matter how badly you think you need a car, this is not something you need to be a part of. And number three, if the dealer is willing to make up a job for you, is willing to create fictitious employment to commit fraud and mislead the bank, that's also a huge red flag. Huge. These are not made up offenses. Big Red, which is now permanently closed, did all of these things. Being coached to lie to the bank when they call you about cash down or your employment is never a good idea. Never ever get talked into being a party to a lie about a car loan. The jury convicted all three defendants of six counts of uttering forged securities based on Norman Pond and gun checks forged by Big Red dealership employees as alleged in counts 14 through 19 of the indictment. For counts 14 through 19, each defendant faces up to 10 years in prison and a $250,000 fine. The jury also convicted all three defendants of six counts of aggravated identity theft as alleged in counts 20 to 25 of the indictment for using the signatures of six customers without lawful authority. For counts 20 to 25, each defendant faces a mandatory term of imprisonment for two years to run consecutive to any other term to the imprisonment and a $250,000 fine. Sentencing took place approximately 90 days later. Are you ready to hear who the general manager of this place was? It might surprise you to know that we've shown you this guy before. He's the ultimate sleazeball in car sales training out there, none other than Andy Elliott. And you know what's funny? He has followers like this idiot who said, Andy Elliott is one of the most wholesome salespeople in the game. Just look at his team in the Elliott group. Ew. Why wouldn't everyone want to have a car buying experience they provide? Are you kidding me? Let's roll with the court documents. We're starting with how Andy got off from being persecuted for his crimes. He agreed to be a witness for the government, and he threw his buddies under the bus. Here's legal counsel Ms. Anderson questioning Andy, referring to his agreement document. I'll read from Ms. Anderson. Kevin will respond for Andy. What do you have to do? I give my testimony fully and make sure it is accurate and is the truth and fully cooperate. Okay, and what does the last paragraph of the first page say? That if I lie, the agreement is no good. All right, so what happens if my office thinks that you've given false information or incomplete information or misleading information? Then the agreement is void. Okay, you can be prosecuted for wire fraud, bank fraud? Yes. Aggravated identity theft, bribery, or anything? Yes, exactly. All right, if we look at the second page of this, please. At the top, could you also be prosecuted for perjury and obstruction of justice? Yes, I can. And now we jump to Ms. Anderson questioning Andy about fake documents. They were just coming back from a court recess. Ms. Anderson continues. Before the break, we were talking about your first stint at Big Red Sports and Imports from December 2012 to mid-2014. Is that right? Yes. June 2014. And during that time period, you were making fake documents in King Cash. Yes. Okay, and of those fake documents, who was creating those? They were created by everybody in management and a lot by the finance department. It was a culture of people. There's a culture excuse. So, who was making the total lost letters? That would be everybody. A couple of clarifications here. The King Cash was just a receipt stating the customer had paid cash down when in fact they had not. That was all fake, a lie to the bank. The total lost letters were a crime of another nature. These were falsified documents which claimed that a vehicle with gross amounts of negative equity had been a total loss, so they didn't have to represent it in the deal. The vehicle ended up being repoed by the previous dealer. And then it goes on to say, all the documents together were made, the total lost letters were by anybody and everybody who had access to a template. Okay. And who knew about it? Everybody. Did Chris Mays know? He's the owner. Yes. And in that time period, you were a general manager? Yes. And you mentioned before the break that in 2013, you made how much money? 700 grand. Okay, and how much of that was your salary? My salary was 20 or 25 grand a month. I think it was 20 or 25, so. Okay, so help me with the math. 
I had about a 400 grand to a 450 salary. And the rest was the percentage of profits? Yes. So about 300,000 was the? Commission. Commission, and that's three to 5% of the dealership's profits? Yeah, what I got paid off of. Okay, and so in 2013, the dealership made a lot of profits. Is that fair? Oh yeah. Besides these things, Andy admitted to meeting a loan officer at a weekend Bible class, giving her cash payments for pushing loans through for approval. You see, they even looped a bank employee into the corruption. Andy was the one feeding her cash to put loans through. It started at $1,000 a week, then two grand, and went up so they could keep their gal in line. Having heard all of this about Andy Elliott, what's really interesting is that in his recent videos, Andy makes this statement. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. I think Chris Mays and the crew over at Big Red would disagree with that. Who wants a guy like Andy Elliott having their back anyway? There are plenty of thugs in car dealerships, friends. Andy Elliott is just one of the many, but a great example of just how bad it can get. It's a buyer beware world. Remember, if you want to make sure you hear from us, you need to subscribe and hit the notification bell. You can also connect with us on Facebook. If you want more in-depth information, please visit our website, thehomeworkguy.com. A lot of frequently asked questions can be answered on our website. When you get there, scroll down the main page to find tons of free downloads designed to help you get through the process of buying a car without getting ripped off. Lastly, if we've helped you save time and money finding a car, consider leaving a tip to help us help the next person. You'll see a super thanks button just below the video, and there are links for making a tip in the description box. You can easily find them by clicking on the read more button seen below. Thanks everyone. All right, if you're new here at the Homework Guy channel, as Elizabeth just said, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. Join our fast growing group of subscribers and become a part of our family. Thanks everyone for coming back and to all of our faithful subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing out with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business, unlike Andy Elliott. Right. We, we gotta, gotta go. go. I got your back. Ha, ha, ha.